Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I'm going to uh, talk about probability and knowledge. This is a second um, introductory lecture in the theory of probabilities for um, advanced math course for teenagers. Um, the whole course is on unizor.com and that's where this lecture is um, linked to. Uh, there are notes uh, to this lecture, they are also on this website and I do recommend you to read the notes before or after um, the lecture. I think it's always very helpful. Um, okay, so this is a second lecture. The first one was about probability and frequency. That's one view to the probability. Um, another view is uh, what I'm going to talk about today. Um, it's related to certain knowledge about the experiment which is being conducted. So, um, let me uh, just uh, have a comparison between random experiment and deterministic experiment. Now, the random experiment is an experiment when you don't really know the result. It can be any one of certain number of results. Like, for instance, if you are uh, flipping the coin, then there are two different results. If you are throwing a dice, there are six different results, depending on what side is on top. Uh, when you are dealing a uh, deck of cards among four bridge players, you can have uh, a lot of different distributions of the cards among the players. Um, so, these are all examples of random experiments. Now, the experiment which is more deterministic is something when you definitely know that there is one and only one result and you can predict this result. Um, like, for instance, if you uh, lift something from the floor and then just uh, leave it uh, uh, to go down, it will go down, it will drop on the floor. I mean, this is something which you can definitely predict because the gravitation um, uh, the laws of gravitation works and uh, basically you can predict for instance the position of the planets which are uh, circling around the Sun um, at, at any uh, future point. Um, so there are things which you can definitely predict and there are experiments which produce a uh, predetermined uh, result. So these are deterministic um, processes. Now, what's the difference? Well, <clears throat> the difference is basically an amount, an amount of knowledge which you have about a particular process. Let's take about, let, let's talk about flipping the coin for instance. Well, yes, you can say that there are actually two equally probable results, but that's only if you do not take into account the uh, beginning position of the coin uh, in your hand, the beginning position of your hand, uh, the force which you are exerting when you're flipping the coin, um, the gravitation force, the uh, air resistance. I mean, there are many, many factors which actually affect uh, the final position of the coin. If you knew all these factors completely, you would be able to predict the position of the coin. So your experiment would not be actually random. So why random experiments are random? Well, because we don't know all this stuff. We know only some major component, like you are flipping the coin basically somehow, but you don't know exactly how, you don't know all the circumstances around it, you don't know the conditions of the experiments, etc. So the fact that the probability of both sides of the coin are half and half is actually a reflection of your lack of knowledge and that's what actually I meant talking about probability and knowledge so the symmetry among uh, different sides of the dice which are on top because between different uh, uh, positions of the uh, coin when you're flipping, between different distributions of cards among players, etc. The randomness is the result of your lack of knowledge 
uh, about your 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 minuscule uh, pieces of information which are all contributing to this particular process so you might say that let's say if you are throwing the dice uh, then there is I'll, I'll try to put it graphically but obviously it's very very um, unscientific so if this represents an effort which you are making when you're throwing the dice then there are hundreds of different very very small factors which you have absolutely no knowledge about which affect the final position of the dice and because you don't know this stuff that's why you're saying that you really cannot predict the result and results are basically um, symmetrical relative to whatever the side of the uh, dice is on top so that's basically my approach to the probability probability is a measurement of amount of knowledge which you don't really know if you wish something like this as soon as you start contributing these factors into your equation of throwing the dice you might actually think that certain are more important certain are less important and after a while your information might be sufficient to predict maybe with a little bit better than half and half uh, or one six and one six and one six in case of a dice um, probability for instance just for a uh, for a chance you know that somebody when making a dice made a little mistake maybe intentional maybe unintentional and one of the sides is a little bit heavier than the other sides then this side would tend to be on the bottom and the opposite side would be of the dice uh, tend to be uh, on the top so that brings the probability of that opposite side to a greater than one six value so this extra knowledge about how this dice was made actually gives you certain uh, ability to uh, view the probabilities differently so probability being equal to all the different results of the experiment means that you don't know anything about how this experiment is conducted and let me give you a little bit more practical example let's take the weather forecast now whatever the weather is right now if I don't know anything at all um, about meteorology, about conditions somewhere else, uh, wind, uh, whatever, I can tell you that tomorrow there will be either a rainy day or a dry day with equal probability as one, of, of one half. I mean, that's the best thing which I can do, right? However, give me some knowledge. Let's say I know that somewhere in I don't know, in, in, in Boston, for instance, there is a rain right now, and the wind blowing towards New York, from Boston to New York, with certain speed, which is basically about sufficient to, 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 to bring that rain to New York tomorrow. I mean, it might actually deviate from the course, but still, right now, as we speak, the course is towards New York. Then I can say that there is a probability that in New York tomorrow there will be a rain and the probability is greater than one half so one half to rain and one half not to rain is just based on no knowledge at all but as soon as I introduce some knowledge my probabilities are shifting so that's why the probability the deviation actually of the probability of equal among different results is actually a uh, uh, the manifestation of certain knowledge that you have about this process about certain new conditions maybe which are um, before were not taken into consideration and that actually brings to uh, the concept of conditional probability which I'm not going to go into the details right now but basically I would like to mention that it's associated with the name of um, Thomas Bias 18th century English mathematician and theologist um, and the whole approach to probability and knowledge that probability is basically lack of knowledge and the more knowledge you have the the more deviation from the equal probabilities you will have 
it's all related it's all actually named after after thomas bias it's called biasing approach to probability so it's completely different from frequency based as you see so anyway uh i have this little plan i wanted to talk about so okay now under these circumstances we still have concepts of events and elementary events however if in the frequency based approach to probability we assigned usually equal probabilities to all the elementary events and then um, after we basically uh, construct from these elementary events any event which we are interested in we can just add up the probabilities and get the probability of the of the event itself like for instance when we were throwing the dice and we were interested in the event of the even number to be on top we just added the probability of 2 to be on the top which is 1 6 and 4 to be on the top which is another 1 6 and 6 to be on the top which is another 1 6 so altogether it was 3 6 or 1 half now in case you know something about the dice like for instance you know that the dice is loaded on one side let's say you have this dice and you know that the bottom is a little bit heavier then whatever is on top this number has a greater probability to uh, to be the outcome of the throwing the dice which means that my probabilities one two three four five and six would not be one six one six one six one six one six and one six as if you don't know anything about the dice but if you do know that something is heavier than another, then let's say that the probability of number 3 is a little higher. Let's say it's uh, 2, 6. And then these might be a little lower, but the sum should be also equal to 1, because we're still kind of talking about a uh, relative number of one side uh, to, be to, to occur relative to the whole number of uh, uh, experiments which we are providing. So if you know that the probability of this is 2, 6, and these guys are slightly less than that uh, what should I say uh, so I have 4 6 divided by 1 2 3 4 5 so it's 420 so it's 1 fifth so this is 1 third this is 1 fifth this is 1 fifth this is 1 fifth this is 1 fifth and this is 1 fifth am I right 1 2 3 4 5 now that's uh, no, it's, no, one fourth. I'm sorry, one fourth. Four. Huh. No, 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 no. Two six, four six divided by five. Four thirties. So it's two fifteenths. That's what it is. Two fifteenths. I'm sorry. Two fifteenths. So the probability of each other is two fifteenths. We have five of them, so it's ten fifteenths, which is two thirds, and one third is for this. Yes. So, if my dice is loaded, and that actually brings the probability of number three to be higher than one six, with lowering the probabilities of all others, then I can definitely say that well, we still have elementary events. Obviously, these are elementary events, but they are no longer evenly distributed probabilities they have different probabilities I still can actually calculate what's the probability of the even number to be on top it's still sum of this this and this but it's no longer one half it's uh, one two three times two fifteen so it's uh, two fifths so it's less than one half so again knowledge shifts the probabilities from being evenly distributed among um, elementary events to something which is a little bit not even depending on how much knowledge we have and if we have an absolute knowledge about everything then I can say that I can actually predict that the certain number will be actually on the top uh, based on the force, the, the air, the, the, the gravitation etc etc, momentum so if I know all that then the probability of some of them would be equal to 
uh, zero and some other would be one. That's the one which I can predict based on full complete knowledge about throwing of the dice. So probabilities are shifted. Okay, um, what else? Uh, yes, I, w I was talking about weather forecast and I I it's actually very important. You see, before, like, I don't know, 50 years ago, our knowledge about the weather wasn't really very good. I mean, we didn't have all these computers, models, etc., etc. And the precision of the forecast, we still wanted to forecast, right? So, but the precision of the forecast wasn't that great. Um, as the science progressed, as we have learned more and more details about how the weather is formed, and we have all these powerful computers which can uh, absorb all this information and process it, etc. So the precision of the forecast, while still not perfect, we are still not exact with our forecast. But, however, we are really closing and closing to basically say that if, if, if the forecast says that tomorrow is, is rain, well, most people actually do bring umbrellas. They, they trust this particular forecast and usually it does rain. I mean, yes, there are some less time changes in the weather patterns, etc. Uh, however, what's important is that the precision of our forecast is growing as our knowledge is growing, which means that if 100 years ago I can say that the probability of the rain tomorrow will be one half, now I can definitely say it with probability of 0.9 that it will or will not be raining tomorrow. It's a much higher probability. Okay, what else I didn't cover? So symmetry, I did cover the symmetry. Symmetry is related to basically lack of knowledge and as soon as we have some symmetry, uh, as soon as we have some knowledge, the symmetry among the elementary events usually is distorted in some way or another. Um, one more interesting thing. Um, you see, one thing is some kind of objective knowledge about, like, weather, for instance. Another thing is about subjective belief. You know, sometimes the person can say, you know what, I believe that stock market will crash in the next three months period. Well, to tell you the truth, there is not much scientific knowledge behind this sentence. Um, yes, there are some objective factors which the person might take into account. However, to say for certain that the market will crash in a three months period is not really <clears throat> the uh, objective knowledge. It's a belief. Belief based on something. Belief based on today's condition, which tomorrow might change, by the way. Um, beliefs may be on something like, uh, I don't know, some kind of desire to to persuade people to behave in certain ways. So what I'm saying is that the knowledge and belief are two different things. Knowledge is objective, uh, science-based um, uh, 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 kind of a conclusion. And uh, belief is an opinion which might or might not be true. And that's why you have to really differentiate before shifting your mental uh, evaluation of the probabilities. Um, you should really differentiate between the scientific knowledge which can, which can be brought by some kind of science and research, etc., and um, between beliefs uh, of certain people who are trying to persuade you to, to do something in some way or another. Um, and that's, by the way, is very commonplace in, in the stock market games. Uh, lots of people express their opinions and uh, sometimes they are uh, not exactly honest people and sometimes they express an opinion just because they want to persuade people to act in a certain way to buy or to sell some specific security and they pretend to be uh, knowing something although that's not really the real knowledge it's more of belief or opinion or attempt to uh, somehow change the behavior of other people Okay, um, and uh, that actually brings me to um, uh, another concept which I did mention very, very briefly in the beginning, the concept of conditional probability. 
Now, conditional probability is probability of certain event if you know something about uh, this particular event prior to make, making an experiment. Um, and uh, as, as an example, I'm not really going any further. I will probably devote a separate lecture to conditional probability. I just want you to understand what actually is all about. Um, uh, let's consider the probability of the person to have lung ca uh, cancer. Well, it happens. Unfortunately, people do get sick and some of them get lung ca cancer. Now, there are insurance companies and insurance companies are um, covering your uh, medical expenses so you're paying certain amount of premiums and in case you get sick they will pay your medical expenses right so let's consider an insurance company now if insurance company doesn't know anything about you well it basically um, thinks about this way well we have so many people a uh, certain number of them historically had cancer during the whatever the period uh, in, in their lifetime period so approximately we can calculate what's the statistics of this what's the frequency of having the lung cancer so let's say we have one in 1000 people average having lung cancer now the expenses to deal with this are such and such so what would be my uh, if i'm an insurance company so how much money i would ask from the person as an insurance premium to cover expenses just in case he gets lung cancer well i should probably cover it in some way that from a thousand people i would get enough money to cover one that that's my average right maybe just a little bit more to have some profit out of it however is it fair Contemporary science, medical science, tells us that if the person is a smoker, then the chances to get uh, lung cancer significantly higher, not just a little, significantly higher. So, insurance company would like to do it a little bit differently now. It actually separates people into smokers and non-smokers. And they know that even if among everybody, one in a thousand has a lung cancer, among smokers it's only one in 50 but among others it's one in in a hundred thousand something like this i'm not sure about exact numbers but definitely the numbers are different so the person is asked actually before um, uh, arranging this uh, insurance policy the insurance company is asking are you a smoker and if he is a smoker they actually demand more money because the probability is higher now, why is this happening from the mathematical stand of uh, view? It's because the conditional probability of getting lung cancer based on the condition that the guy is a smoker is higher than the absolute probability, unconditional probability of getting the lung cancer. So, if we are talking about all people without any knowledge about their smoking habits, we are talking about unconditional probability to get lung cancer and we can base it on frequency. We have thousand people and one of them on average gets the lung cancer if however we add this condition the probabilities are changing and we are talking right now about conditional probability which is equal to let's say 150 uh, for a smoker and one in hundred one over 100,000 for non-smoker that's what actually the conditional probability is all about and these conditions are actually the knowledge. So if we know about the person, we know about conditions of this person, we are changing the probability, probabilities of different results of our um, experiments. Well, that's it. I would suggest you to read the notes for these lectures again, just to make sure that you understand all these concepts. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.